One of the things that's um, different about a recitation like this is that um, you're really coaching students as opposed to talking at them. So um, it takes a little bit of a different mindset. In a normal recitation, you would prepare 50 minutes of material uh, and, and you would go in, you'd be prepared to lecture for 50 minutes. Uh, in a recitation like this, you have to be much more flexible. You have to think about um, how far do I let the students go? Um, do I need to go intervene or let them work it out a little bit? Um, sometimes it's important for students to really uh, struggle a little bit to see what the central issue is, uh, but letting them struggle too long is not productive, so it's very useful at that point to step in uh, and, and try to help. Um, I like to think it, of it as um, coaching rather than telling. Uh, it's um, if you were teaching uh, students or athletes how to play soccer or baseball, you wouldn't just tell them about it, you would go out and show them, you would uh, watch how they do it, you would correct um, big mistakes as they got better, you'd correct smaller mistakes, uh, and that's really the way to think about a recitation like this, that you're coaching them, you're helping shape uh, the student's understanding uh, so that they can become uh, hopefully as expert as you are in the material. So most of us are used to um, knowing what's going to happen in the 50 minutes in a classroom. So you prepare a certain amount of material, you expect to go in and present that material. You might run a little short or a little long, but there aren't any big surprises. Uh, when you run an active recitation like this, um, well, what I typically do is I prepare more problems uh, than I think I'll need because I don't know how many I will actually use. Uh, and Sometimes I use three or four, and sometimes we may only uh, use one. Uh, and, and so one of the things you have to, to be prepared for is uh, to adapt on the fly. You, you, you've got to be willing to be flexible uh, and work a little bit without a net because you're just not quite sure what's um, going to happen. Uh, and I've seen this in, in classroom instruction using active techniques as well, where I've asked a concept question and discovered uh, through this immediate feedback that um, students have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, it would just be foolish at that point to plow ahead and keep talking about this thing they don't know about. Um, you really have to adapt and, and figure out what have I done wrong? Um, how can I make this uh, concept clearer because I haven't really done a good job? This certainly is a lead compensator, mm -hmm. but I almost always write it. A really good problem in recitation uh, is one that's not tricky, but that is likely to expose a misconception that students commonly have. So if you've taught a class for a while, you may discover that students um, uh, often make the same kind of error when looking at a problem. Um, and if that's the case, then a, then a very good thing to do is to present a problem where they have the opportunity to make that mistake. You don't want them to make the mistake. But if they do make that mistake, it's then an opportunity uh, for teaching, right? It's a teaching moment where you can explain uh, why that might seem like the right answer and why it's in fact not, uh, and correct that misconception. One of the uh, things I really like about this approach uh, is that it's just fun. It's much more fun to spend 50 minutes coaching students, talking with them, chatting with them, getting to know them a little bit, um, understanding what they don't understand, than it is to just talk at them for 50 minutes. Um, so all other things being equal, I'd much prefer to do uh, the stand-up recitations than a conventional recitation. Um, of course, what really matters is the outcome, but I do think the outcomes are better. Uh, so in this case, it's a win-win uh, situation. I really enjoy it. Uh, and I actually wouldn't do it any other way in the future.